Good morning and welcome. Pope Francis reminds us God is looking for you even if you do not seek him. God loves you even if you forget him. God sees beauty in you even if you think you have squandered all your talents in vain. We gather together today to experience that love in sacred word and holy Eucharist. Our celebrant is Monsignor Ron Bill, and our homilist is Father Tom Ryan. Teresa Giroux and I, Mary Ann Donnelly, are the proclaimers of the word. A reminder to please silence your cell phone. Please stand now as we begin our celebration of the Eucharist. Good morning. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, Here I Am, Lord, number 378. Here I Am, Lord, number 378. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of the Mass this morning on this 14th week of the ordinary time of the year. We come together as one family, knowing that God loves us very much. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As the Lord is with us in a very special way, we ask him to help us. For, Lord, you have come to draw us to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Risen Lord, you help us walk with you. You forever, without looking back, Christ, have mercy. Christ. Risen Lord, you send us the Spirit to strengthen us in our total commitment to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen and glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, Chad. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who were mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breast. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread, pr spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. The words to our psalm are, Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Joyfully to God, all the earth, sing praise to the glory of his name, proclaim his glorious praise, say to God, how tremendous are your among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear. 
declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who refused me not. My A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make trouble for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Friends, the Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals. Greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you. For the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. 
The 72 returned rejoicing. They said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Peace is so fragile in our world. Peace is a reality that has too often been absent throughout mm -hmm. history. Historians actually tell us that there have been many more years of war and conflict in our world than there have been of world peace. Most spiritualists would contend that peace will never become a reality in our world or even between certain nations if the individuals involved do not first experience an inner peace in their own lives. A while back, Duke University, excuse the expression, <laughs> Duke University did a study of peace of mind, very interesting study on peace of mind. And the study found that factors that contribute to emotional and mental stability are these, contributing to mental and emotional stability the absence of suspicion and resentment. It said that nursing a grudge was a major factor in unhappiness. Not living in the past. It said an unwholesome preoccupation with the past, with old failures and mistakes, can even lead to depression. Not wasting time and f energy fighting conditions you cannot change. In other words, cooperate with life rather than running away from it. Force yourself to stay involved with the living world. Resist the temptation to withdraw from the world during times of stress. Refuse to indulge in self-pity when life hands you a raw deal. He said, accept the fact that no one gets through life without some sorrow and misfortune. Cultivate traditional values, love and humor, compassion and loyalty. And we would add faith. Do not expect too much of yourself. Find something bigger than yourself to believe in. For us, that is God. They said that self-centered people scored lowest in any test for measuring happiness or peace of mind. Those are some of the factors contributing to peace of mind. And we look at that from a faith perspective. It makes sense. As a community of prayer, we pray for peace, peace of mind, peace in the family, world peace. We extend a handshake and embrace of peace at every Mass. What do we mean by that peace of Christ? How do we experience it? Well, the scriptures use the word peace to indicate right relationship, right relationship between God and us, between us and other people. So we can say we are at peace with God when we experience that. Remember, Jesus' farewell gift to the church was, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives it do I give peace. The Lord's peace was the realization that the kingdom of God has already begun in its seed here on earth. And it's precisely that peace that Jesus was instructing his apostles in the gospel to carry out with them into the world. And it's that very same peace that the Lord asks us to take into the world. But to bring that peace that shalom into the world, we have to first experience it. Now we come here, when we walk in these doors, we come as individuals. But once we enter these doors, we come together automatically as a community of faith, a community of believers who are open to the divine presence, open to the peace that only the Lord can give. And with all the problems and the trials that we experience in our day-to-day -day lives, we come here not to lose them, but to ask the Lord to be with us in those difficulties. And what does Jesus promise? I am with you always. It's here in this place, at this altar, that we can experience a true and lasting peace. 
I shared with you before an analogy that I love that a spiritual writer used to, to talk about how the Lord does that. He said, think of a hurricane that exceeds 75 miles per hour and it's hovering over the Atlantic Ocean. And to get an idea what a hurricane is like, he said, take a Frisbee, put a hole in the middle of the Frisbee, and the Frisbee grows and grows and grows till it's 100 miles across. But right in the center of the hole is 10 miles, right in the center. And it begins to twirl and twirl to 100 miles an hour. And he says, of course, the interesting perspective as you look at a hurricane and study hurricanes is that the eye in the middle has a sense of calm. And as the Air Force sends planes through hurricanes, they say you can see the blue sky and the sun. There's not even any wind. When you're in the eye, you have that sense of calm. I think that eye of the hurricane is a good analogy of what the Lord intended the Lord's Supper to be, every Eucharist to be. All about us, storms can be raging in the world and in our personal lives, violence, war, abuse, killing, and so on and so forth. We come here to the Eucharist, in a sense, we're passing through the eye of the storm. We're coming here to experience a sense of peace in light and life. But Jesus intended, never intended, that we remain here in the eye of the storm. He wants us to leave the eye of the storm to go out and bring that peace into the world. And so we become instruments of God's peace. It's just that peace that he instructed the disciples as he sent them out two by two. And he sends us out to do the same. Where are the areas in my world that I can bring peace today? Maybe it's in the home, in the family life. Maybe it's in the neighborhood. Maybe it's in the workplace, whatever. If I believe in the Holy Eucharist, the very presence of Jesus that we're privileged to receive, then we make the prayer of peace, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, our own. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Let us pray together now in professing our faith. For I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Nourished by the word of God, we make our prayers and petitions before our God who loves us beyond measure. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and for Pope Francis, Bishop Cunningham, and Bishop-elect Lucia, that they embody a prophetic ministry of teaching the Catholic faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who serve society as first responders and those who care for our safety. This weekend, we especially remember those who serve in the military and for all veterans. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and those with disabilities, that they find Christ's power in their weakness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are trapped by poverty, poor health, for the people of California experiencing the earthquake tremors, that they may be strengthened by God's saving love and by caring people who help them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, that family members listen deeply to each other, celebrate the stories of each other, and grow in love, compassion, and kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the terminally ill, in need of God's grace and comfort, and for their caregivers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for those who have died in Christ, that they will know the peace of the risen Lord, especially Bruno Primerano, whom we remember at this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Father, as you answer the prayers we have presented to you today, grant <coughs> us the strength and courage to answer your call to holiness. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Tis the Gift to be Simple, number 518. Tis the Gift to be Simple, number 518.
May the oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the light of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up, for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring it to the fullness of charity, Together with, with our Holy Father, Francis, Robert, our bishop, our bishop-elect, the clergy, the religious, and all of the faithful. Remember our loved ones, our brothers and sisters, who 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Savior's command now, formed by divine teaching, we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, that we may be always free from sin, safe from distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of the power, the glory of the Lord, is not for us. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you here today. And let us offer a sign of our Lord's peace to one another. My friends, this is the Lamb of God who takes away all of our sins. Happy those called to the banquet of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Just to remind you that the rosary will be prayed on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock at the Shrine. As always, the ice cream and for the kids is available afterwards. Next weekend, we will welcome Archbishop Costa from Bangladesh as part of our annual mission appeal with the propagation of the faith. There will be a separate collection after communion to assist with the Holy Cross Mission Center in his <coughs> archdiocese. Checks check should be made payable to Immaculate Conception Church with mission appeal in the memo. Vacation Bible School is the week of July 22nd. Registration forms are in the table in Doyer Hall Corridor and also on the parish website. Adult and, and youth volunteers are needed. If you would like to donate a small item, a snack, there's a list of items needed on the bulletin board in the rectory vestibule. Take a bulletin after Mass today for the annual cemetery Mass on, on uh, July 30th. A list of the upcoming, upcoming anniversary events of our 150th anniversary. And I hope you had a good fourth. I asked one person, and I said, how'd you do? And he said, I had a good time. I, he said, I had a fifth for the fourth. <laughs> Very appropriate. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Mass today. Hope you have a good week now, and enjoy this good weather. Let us pray together. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Enjoy the weekend and uh, uh, just relax a little bit. <laughs> you too, yeah, you should relax a lot. That's our problem. We're, all, we're always so tight and we're always busy. Take a little time for yourself. God bless you all. And please join in singing our recessional hymn, America the Beautiful, number 627, America the Beautiful, number 627.